for this second video we're basically going to go over the customizer for the beaver builder um what this is going to help you go through well actually let me backtrack so i highly recommend before you do anything um with your website that you set you set up these you configure these settings um the main reason for this is because you don't want to get so knee deep into design and have to manually set a lot of options that we can set globally and a lot of people don't think that this is important but i have to stress it it is very important it makes you well it is important but i really stress it because it'll make your life a whole lot easier as you continue to design and lay out your website so how do you get to the customizer so when you log into the back end of your wordpress install um, you'll hover over here to appearance and click on customizer this then brings up the customizer and what you'll notice is that you can see that we have the active theme set beaver builder child theme is active once again from our previous video we really recommend you to have a child theme active and then you can basically see the home page of your website so um, what we're going to do is go through all of these options here and um, walk you through and give explanation for everything so if you hover over presets and click on it, you can see that the, the this what you're seeing here is the default preset. So the um, the way that the, the name of the website's listed here, the menu, the um, icon over here, the way everything is laid out, this here is a preset. I'm not gonna lie, I leave this the same because as we get further into this video series, I'm actually gonna show you how to completely customize this upper area the header and the footer completely customized meaning that we won't even use the customizer for this um section however if you're somebody trying to get up and running quick uh these default settings can most definitely assist in helping you get your website up and running quicker um so with that being said if we this is the default option if i click this drop down and click on default dark um what you'll notice is that now everything is black and you can see the colors went green right so basically we've got this dark grayish blackish tone in the header in the footer area if we click on classic you can kind of see everything kind of went to this box layout um, we've got um, the text or logo that would go here call us and then the menu and this the um, the search icon here ultimately you know you can kind of get go through all of these options and you know kind of see what you like don't like but ultimately i just leave this as the default option and um and from there i fully customize which once again we'll get fully into it so what i'll do is just i'll keep this at default click this back button um the next section we're going to go over is general so if we click on general got a couple of options here this is probably one of the more important areas that um, I specifically use to ensure everything is set up properly. So if we click on layout, you can see that we've got a couple of options here. Full layout, content width. So basically this is saying the width in between uh, the content of your pages. Um, you can make this, you know, 1300. And what you'll notice is if you notice everything kind of spaced out a little bit more. So for instance, if I did 1920, you'll see that everything gets pushed out further apart. So this basically says no matter what device you're on, how far out, how wide do you want your content, you know, to be? Um, typically, I go if I want like the a super wide layout, meaning that whenever I'm designing websites, I typically don't go over 1300. However, I think I believe it was like the default was 1020, right? Um, with that being said, you can see scroll to top button. So if we click enabled, well, we wouldn't see it here now because we can't, there's no reason to scroll to the top, but this enables a button that'll show up in the bottom right hand corner when you scroll down um, far enough that you'll be able to click and the page will automatically scroll all the way up. Um, CSS framework. Um, so basically you've got a couple of options here, minimal bootstrap, minimal bootstrap four, all right so we've got that um font awesome icons so we can set a default here as well uh font awesome five or font awesome four shim you can actually go to font awesome and actually see what these icon sets look like 
um, on their site. I mean, a simple Google search to Fawn Awesome can make that work. Um, and then here, um, what you'll see is that um, theme minimum minimum breakpoint. So the idea here is just that when your browser or whatever device, if it is 992 or less, it'll begin to show basically, um, and I just clicked this icon down here below, like an iPad view, a tablet view. Um, for your mobile devices, if you want, um, when a, whenever a mobile device hits 768 or smaller, this is when the um, basically you see the menu icon um, looks this way for this particular layout, so on and so forth. So you can actually set those options. Given that phones are getting bigger, smaller, you know, you can. This really helps you um, say when, at what, at what point, right? Break point. Do you want someone to be able to um, see the mobile view, see the tablet view? so on and so forth. Well, I don't say so on and so forth because those are the only two options. But those options are for you. In most cases, if you're not a developer and you're just trying to design your website, the default settings for the most part should be fine. From there, we can click on background. I think this is pretty self-explanatory here. Uh, this here is like the global background area of your pages. So if I click this and turned it green, this should turn my whole page um, green. Which is, whoa, no, take that back, my bad. Uh, it actually just turned, it, well, it did turn my the pages of my background green. However, I'm not technically on a page. I'm actually on an archived page blog area. So I'll show you where that happens. Um, and then I'll also show you how this, this green did change the background area. Just give me a few moments. We'll continue to go down everything. Um, as far as a background image, if you wanted to add an, a background image for your whole website, you can also add that image here by just simply clicking select and uploading your files here. So I click the background button. If we click on accent color, so basically this here, this accent um, sets the, and as you can see here, links, buttons, and various other um, elements on your site. So as you can see right now, if I click on, if I hover uh, over these links, you really can't tell because this blue, while it is a little bit darker, it's not noticeable enough. But if I click on this blue and let's just make it red, that will turn. And if you notice, this turned green now because I set the background green. Um, you can see that the icon, the, the text now is red. And if you notice, the hover color is blue. So when I hover over it, it's blue. Um, if I turn this back red and then let's see, let's make that a nasty mustard color, I guess. <laughs> if I hover over it, you can see now I've got a nasty mustard color oh this is horrible let me actually just i can't look at that like that let's go ahead and there we go so um yeah so if you know well you can barely notice i know you can't because this font's very small um but the color does change and this basically is the setting for um links buttons um and how what the main color is and what the hover color e initially sets to very important and when I say very important, uh, very important, let's say you're creating a website and you want the links to be, you know, transfer from blue to yellow, but you didn't set these global options here. That means every page that you're creating, you would find yourself needing to set the hover color, the main color of the link and the default color for the hover for every link. That is why this is very important to fill this out or set this up. Um, headings. In short, this is where you basically select your fonts. So um style settings headings you can you can customize all headings these settings can be used for all headings being like the hello world the recent post i believe this would even affect the title of here and i'll we'll find out here shortly um but you can also just customize the h1 style so you're you're heading one styles you can customize the color, select the font, the font weight, the font format, meaning you can just have it regular, capitalized, uppercase, or all lowercase. Um, and then here you can find the sizing, the line height, and the letter spacings all below. Um, so let's see. Poppins is my favorite Google fonts. And that's where all of these fonts are pulling from. If not all, most of these fonts, if most or if not all Google fonts are loaded here. So you have a wide array of fonts to take a look at. Um, and if you want to visibly see the fonts, you can just go to, um, you can Google, Google fonts and the first result will be it. 
um, we can change the color of these. Um, I don't know why we did that. So we can turn that purple. And what you'll notice is all of the headings turn purple. Um, font weight, let's say we want it to be ultra bold. You'll notice here. Here, everything went ultra bold, right? Um, and then you can see it, we, if we did capitalize, um, that basically is the default. So every the first letter in every word is capitalized. If I click on uppercase, not sure why it's not uppercasing, lowercase. Well, I'm not saying know what's going on with that. I don't want to click publish because I'm not going to save these options. But nevertheless, it should unless it was it's overwritten somewhere. The idea is just that you can. Um, let's see. Capitalize. Let's turn that to 30. Well, I'm not certain why it's not happening. Well, the font format, I, I guess at some point in time, I can look into this and probably leave an explanation in the video description to see what actually happened here. But nevertheless, this should um, say uh, configure whether it just uh, regular means however you typed it out. That's exactly how it's going to show up. Um, if we click on capitalize, that should capitalize all of the letters in your, uh, I mean, uh, capitalize the first word letter in each um, um, word. If we do uppercase, that should make all um, letters uppercase and then if we did lowercase that should make all letters lowercase meaning that you don't have to if you want everything capitalized you don't have to click the caps lock key every time basically and when you type it out by default it'll it'll um, capitalize everything from there we can go to text basically the same exact thing um, you can select your your font select your color And then also select your font weight. I'm just making it bold just so that you can see it. So you notice it's bold. This is very, very bad. Select your font size, right? Um, and then even your line height. And if you don't know what line height is, that's basically the space in between each individual line of text. So for instance, this is 1.45. Let's do 1.7. Or no, let's just drag the thing. So if you notice everything is spacing out more, right? And that's because there's more space in between each line, hence the term line height. From here, um, there's options to configure your buttons. Um, if we click none default, the idea is just that whatever the default settings are that you're using for your website, uh, it'll just use those and you know that'll be it. However, you can click on custom and whenever you drag out a button module, more on modules um, later on in this video, I mean later on in this video series, the idea is just that you don't have to configure each and every button that you drag out, meaning that you can um, set the color of your button to be um, the text of the button. That's what this one is. Hover color um, is here. And then basically your background color while it's not hovered, right? So if I was to stay true to what we're looking at here, I'd make it probably red, right? And then the background color would be red, but that little pinkish red that we had from the initial links section, right? Um, you can select the font that that button would need the font weight, right? And then the font size, the line height, text transformation, regular capitalized, uppercase, lowercase. And then if you wanted it to have a border, you've got some options here as well. Very, very important. Uh, I don't know a website that does not have a button. And the last thing that I would want to do is have to configure a button every time I drag it out drag out the module um, social media links so uh, beaver themer does include um, like a default way for you to include your social media um, and you can just basically paste in your url for all of the provided um, social media links here and you've got three options here you can do custom here where you can customize the way your social media links show up here you can use the monochrome option which is the default or you can use basically the branded option um here let's see if this actually shows up anywhere considering we do not have yeah i don't have it active on this site as of yet 
Um, but nevertheless, these are your social. This is your social link section that you can add on your site. And do keep in mind, I will be later on in this video going over or in this video series going over how to fully customize. So if you're going to fully customize a header in your footer, um, the idea is just that you really wouldn't need to worry about this social links because you'll be able to put these anywhere in the header or footer. Um, from there, we've got the header. So all of these options here basically go over how this header can be configured. So um, top bar layout. So as you can notice, there's no top bar. This is the header. But on some sites, you've probably noticed that sometimes there's like this little small bar at the top that is like social media icons, phone numbers, so on, emails, contact us information um, in the very top. That's what this option is. So if we click on top bar layout, click this drop down, click on one column, for instance, You'll notice this very fine line right here, and you'll notice this is the top bar area. So we can type in um, text, hello world, right? And you'll notice that that's added up here at the top. If we click this drop down, we can do text and icons, right? So if you remember, we got text, and then I did add a link for Facebook, Twitter in the dead Google Plus page. Yeah, I believe that's what it was called. Um, here. So the idea is just that you can do text and social media icons at the top. Um, so for instance, follow us, right? If we click this drop down, we can add a menu. As of right now, we don't have any menus created at the moment. If we click this drop down again, we can do menu and social media icons. And then lastly, we can just do social media icons, which is what you see here. Now, we also have an option to do two columns, meaning that we can have social media icons in one column and then we can have text in another. Email. Right. So easily. Right. We've got your icons to the left, email to the right, and as you can see, it automatically responds accordingly. No code it needed, no customizations needed. This is actually built in directly to the Beaver Builder theme. Um, and then if you don't want anything, you can just click on none, right? Or keep it at none. Uh, from there, we've got top bar style. So um, here, things kind of get a little bit more intricate. Uh, meaning that we can change the background of the um, top bar styled area. So you can notice that up there, this is where we can change the color here, which ooh, that is, this is bad. I just I cannot believe I'm using these weird, weird colors. But nevertheless, you can see that we can change the color, the background opacity. We can um, change the opacity, how dark, how light. Um the um the bottom uh the the little, 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 losing my train of thought um how dark and light that background area can be and if you notice you saw a hint of green that is where i was saying that the default color for the top bar is white right when you first came in here when we first came in here however if we cut the opacity all the way down what's behind that white color is that green set from earlier today so you don't have to think i don't know what i'm talking about um if you notice it's green up here well it's not green at the bottom because we kind of pushed the page down um, a little bit but this is what you see here um up here you can see that the text color is gray um, basically we can edit that text color by just simply clicking on the text color make it white just so that you can see it all right, so that text is white. And then also, if we would have added a menu, we can change the colors of the text for that menu, meaning that where it says link color, right? If it, let's say it was green, we would have made it green and probably, you know, made it hopefully not this red hover color, but the menus, the men, whatever menu that would have been up here at the top, that that would have been linked. Those would have been links. And we this is how we would have. Um, basically uh um, what am i trying to say um tailored the colors of what needed to happen up here in this top bar for that styling and with that let's see if i can do some quick mail to yeah oh well, no 
I don't feel like doing any HTML right now. But for instance, if this was a link, if we would have turned this into a link, um, this here, if we would have hovered over it, um, the, this text here would have took taken the style of what we have here as well. Let's go ahead and click back. The header layout. So if you take a look at everything, navigation to the right, um, fixed header, fade in. So these are some options basically on how we can maneuver the heading um, of the site. So if you notice nav centered, so the logo is now, or the, the logo or the name of the website is now centered. This is where the menu is. And then we've got the search icon over here to the right. Uh, if we did nav vertical left, basically what you'll see here is everything is now pushed over to the left and all of the content of the website is now to the right. Um, if we did nav bottom, the idea here is that what you'll notice here is that now the navigation is at the bottom, but it did also include content layout over here to the left. So we've got the logo, we've got call us now, and then we've got our social media icons, our branded social media icons over here to the right. So if you wanted to change this text here, you can see that that text can be changed here. And you can see once again, the content layout says text and social icons. We can just do social icons text, or we can simply do none. Um, so that's the header layout options. Uh, from there, if we go to header layout styles, um, the idea is that once again, this is now the header. So if, once again, if we were to make this green, right, the header area is now green. If we made the opacity lower, you'll notice that once again, it's still green because once again, behind all of this white is actually the green color. Um, and then the text itself. So this is a link. So we would make that white. So this text will now turn white. And then obviously the hover cover is blue. So that's what you see blue. And then if we just had um, like, for instance, that text over here to the right that said call us, if we were to make that white, that text would have turned white as well. Um, let's see. And then we've got a header logo. So basically this is where we would officially upload our logo as of right now, it just says logo type text. So that's why you see the text. Uh, but if you want it to do an image, you can click this drop down, click on image, and then you can update the logo in the regular upload logo image, the retina logo image. Uh, the fade in header logo image, uh, fade in logo retina image, and then the mobile logo. Um, if you don't know what retina and all this other stuff is, ultimately you'll find yourself just making sure that you want to upload an image, the regular image. And then for the mobile, um, some logos that are load that look a certain way on um, desktop, may be big or may suit to be placed in a left area of the site. However, if you find yourself not liking the way that that logo looks on mobile maybe you have a mobile version of your logo and you can basically upload this meaning that if the logo is going to sit here you might have a different version of your logo that you want to use on mobile view versus what will sit up here in the upper left hand corner or the center of the site so on and so forth um, from there, navigation layout, um, while I do, we do not have a navigation set up, but th these option sets here basically set, um, set up how your navigation works, meaning that um, nav search icon, if we click the drop down and click disable, I hope we all understand that this means that we just disabled the search icon here responsive nav toggle so you can use a menu button or a hamburger icon if you noticed well we didn't notice because we don't have a icon if you say menu button that's just going to leave a menu text for people to click on however um on most sites that i've seen the idea is that if you notice when you look on a website on mobile view um, a matter of fact we can play around with that so you can see that this is menu right if we click this button and click on hamburger icon what you'll notice is, is that now we get these three bars. This is the hamburger icon. And if you did not know why this is called a hamburger icon, it doesn't look like a hamburger icon until I just told you it's a hamburger icon, right? So you've got the bread at the bottom, bread at the top, meat in the middle, right? Hamburger icon. That's why it's called that. Um, so learn something new every day, right? 
Um, so with that being said, that's the, the responsive navigation toggle set here. The breakpoint, so you have the option to say, hey, right now, if we come to the um, tablet view, it's meant to show the full navigation. However, let's say you want it to be shown on medium and small devices. That menu I option should turn into a ha hamburger icon, right? Let's say you want it to show um, on all devices, meaning that you don't want a text-based navigation for your website. You want everybody to go through a hamburger icon. If we click this drop down and click on always, we're basically saying no matter what browser size they're, they're looking at, there's always going to be a hamburger icon shown. Responsive layout. So basically, we can do a drop down with what you see here now. So basically, if there was, you know, an actual menu already created, uh, the drop it would show the as a drop down. We can do a fly out overlay. And if you notice, there's an additional option that says from the left. So if we click this, you notice here that we had a fly out from the left. Uh, we can do it from the right. And that's what you see here as well. Um, and yeah, so we got fly out. We can do fly out push. And then we've got a fly out push with opacity. Let me just go ahead and show you what the push looks like. Boom. So it just pushed the website over, right? Um, and then the, I might as well show you the with opacity. So with opacity, I am assuming that it's going to give an opacity over what we've pushed over. Yeah. So it darks out everything here and makes the focus this fly out. Um, responsive collapse. So basically only allow one menu item at a time to be expanded, you know, for the most part, that just basically means if you've got sub pages, you can hover over as many and expand as many as you want right now. It's set to no, but if you did want people to expand all of the, the sub menus, um, you can sub navigational items, you can click on yes, and that will be true. Um, and then lastly, we can style the navigation by uh, following these um, items here. So in your menu, if you do have a sub navigation navigation link, basically a drop down, um, you can set what um, what the indicator is. So is it a plus icon, a negative icon, whatever that indicator needs to be? That's what you can see here. Uh, the background color of that would be white. You can set the opacity. Um, we can do the background of those of that area, and then ultimately the fonts, the link colors, everything, right? And, and I can't necessarily show you because we don't have a menu uh, created at this point, but this is basically all of the option sets for the navigation style. From there, if we come to content, um, this is basically the reason why, just so that we backtrack, so right, because I don't want you to think I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, if we click on content background, you can see that the background color is set to white. If we move that all the way down to zero, you will notice now the way you can notice everything is green now. And that is because the background, the content background area was white. So just wanted to show you that I'm going to turn it back white here just so that we don't have to worry about going all the way back. But nevertheless, that's your option set there. Let's go ahead and click this background option. So um, this is the blog layout. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail into all of these options. However, the blog layout, you can notice you can set your sidebar option. Um, sidebar to the right. We can move it to the left. We can say if we want the size bar to be large, medium, small, or custom. Uh, we can just show the sidebar on desktop only or always where we want the sidebars to be viewed. Apply sidebars to post types, posts and media. Um, and then we can also set, um, do we want the post author being the by the date in the comment count? If we were to click hidden to all of those, for instance, you'll notice basically this whole row um, go away. Right. So if you're writing content out and you're blogging and stuff, and you don't, and, but you don't blog all the time, you don't want the date to be a thing um, that interferes with the content. Uh, oh, you haven't updated your blog post in a while. Well, you can just disable that easily that way. Um, we've got archive layout settings. Um, we've got post layout, which is basically if we were to click read more here. 
Um, this is basically the layout of the post, right? So featured image, there's no featured image added anyway, but if you did want an image, the featured image of this post to be viewed, you can do so by saying, hey, let's put it above the title, above the post, or beside the post, uh, post categories. Uh, we can have that visible or hidden, and once again, tags, the next and back and author box. We can make sure that all of those settings are on and off just by simply clicking here. One of the good things is that these this set of options has not been common um, when I was designing websites early on, WordPress websites early on, and to see that this is added, baked into the theme itself is, is awesome. There's one less plugin you have to install. Um, WooCommerce layout, so if you're selling any products, which we won't be going over through this video series, but they do have options here when it comes to WooCommerce and then Lightbox options as well. If you want people to be able to click on a photo and uh, have the image blow up and dark in the background, um, that option set is available here as well. So let's go ahead and go back, back, back. Um, we've got the footer options. So this is the footer um, once again, I'm going to go over how to fully customize the header and the footer way later on in this video series. However, pretty much like the navigation system, the footer's no different, right? So footer widgets layout, um, the idea is just that where do you want your footer listed on all pages? Do you want it disabled or only on the home page? Those are the option sets there. Footer widget styles. So basically, we can control the background color of the footer. We can also, well, well, I take the back. It's the widget styles. So give me a few moments. You'll see where that green is going to come into play. Actually, let me make this purple. I'm tired of looking at green right now. <laughs> I'll show you where that's going to come into play. Um, but with that, the, um, the text style down here below, text color, Let's make that blue, purple, link color, yellow, green, right? Purple, yellow, green. So once again, widget styles. We'll see. Actually, we're going to need to make that white. So I'll show you where this will come into play here shortly. So we'll click that um, back button. Footer layout. So basically, here is where everything basically kind of starts making sense. So if we hit layout, we can see that we can do none. Right, which completely removes the footer. If we do one column, that should bring in this back end. And then you can see that there's text here, already here, right? However, if you wanna add your own text, basically whatever you type in this column text box, hello, footer. Right, it overrides what's already down there. Right, you can also do once again the same exact things that we had at the top bar area. We could add social icons, text, and social icons. Right, and then me a menu. Um, and then also we can have the two column layout as well. So, menu over here got that information over there footer style so down here is basically where we're able to control the color of the text which is what i was trying to do pre previously so if we take the text color this gray is correlating with that phone number gray there so if we turn that purple that gray text down here in the bottom right hand corner will turn purple and then obviously if we were to change the link color here you'll be able to see that the link color is yellow, we hover over this red, right? And then same thing for the menu, because this it would have been a clickable link because all of these links, it's a menu, right? Let's click the, um, the back button here, and then we'll come back here one more time, parallax effect. So the parallax effect of the footer is basically if we wanted to, add, if we had some form of an image in the background and that image would have scrolled up and down, when we, it'll, look, it'll show to have some form of emotion in the background. Um, let's see. So I'm actually want to, now the next area we come to is the widgets. So if you remember, we did some coloring that you do not see right now. 
Um, and that coloring happened in the footer area. Let's see, right here, right? Background color and all that cool, kind of cool stuff. So if we come to widgets, the widgets area, um, for the most part, this is where you can drag out some things that'll show up in the sidebar, primary sidebar area. So if you see search, that's what you see here. Recent posts, that's what you see here. Recent comments, so on and so forth. When you wanna add a widget to the side, to the sidebar you can click on add widget and see all of the available widgets to you audio calendar category so on and so forth click the back button but now we're going to come to footer column one add a widget and let's just say we want to add a calendar cal all right by adding this calendar this one is taking a little bit while to go there now right now you can see where those color options came from so you can see that we have a purple background area right and everything is white and then the link is changing from yellow to green if i click this back button click the back button again and go to footer and go to footer widget styles this is basically what we're looking at here so the background color is purple We've got the text color being white. That's why all of the text is white. And then we've got a link color, which is yellow, right? And then the hover color is green. So when I hover over the yellow, it turns green. So that's how that works. Um, Beaver Builder does give you up to four columns over here. So if we come to column number two, click add widget. Let's add a gallery. Um, let's go to footer widget number three. Let's add, I don't know, an audio file. And then widget number four, let's just add a search. Let's let this do its thing and render what we have just added to our footer. So, um, I, well, obviously we wouldn't see any gallery because there's no images and also there's no audio file, but you can see that it basically made four columns. Well, you can't see that it made four columns. Let's do a better job of, let's do recent posts, that'll work. Because it'll at least show the hello world. So we've got the calendar. We see the recent posts and then blah, blah, blah. All right. So now we can actually see some stuff. Right. So now we've got a a whole area at the bottom with four things in our footer, right? Um, from there, there's also one area, one additional area that I really like that's there is this after post widget. So if we click add widget and I mean, typically you would want to add some, you can add more widgets depending upon what um, plugins you install. But one thing that I would recommend putting is like an email opt-in. However, we don't have that here. So I'm just going to add text. Thank you. Thanks for reading my post. All right. Thanks for, uh, so thanks. So the idea is that if you're blogging or using any of the posts on your website, um, the idea is that you can actually add a after post widget. Um, and the idea here is that it says, thank you. Thanks for reading my post, right? Um, so you can actually add some things within your content here um, that'll just go at the bottom of every blog post um, you write. Let's click the back button. Um, code, probably another area that I really, really like because it keeps you from having to install more plugins. So if you've got JavaScript code, code that needs to go in the head section, the header and the footer code. Kevin, I don't know what that means. So if you're a developer, you kind of already know what all that specifically does uh, or w why you would need this. But if you're somebody just starting out with making websites, basically for Google Analytics, Google Analytics gives you a set of code um, that you can copy and paste and it needs to go into the header area of your website. You would paste that code right here. You don't need to install anything 
on your you don't need to install an additional plugin or anything like that you'll just simply copy and paste that code and this will go on every page of your website and google will be satisfied with being able to track the traffic um another thing is the um facebook chat a lot of people like to install Facebook chat plugins and stuff like that. I'm like, if I do not have to install a plugin to get the functionality, I really do not want to install it. Um, so if you've ever set up, um, if you've ever gone to Facebook and um, enabled the chat functionality on your site, you'll notice that there's an area that says, hey, if you want to add Facebook Messenger to your website, hey, you can you'll they'll go through a configuration Um set and i'm sure i'll probably end up doing a video at some point if i have not already done so by the time you've watched this video but you'll take that facebook chat code that facebook gives you and you'll basically paste it i believe in the head area of your website and you'll just paste that code here give it a few seconds and ultimately you'll see a little chat bubble um pop up here if you do a lot of other third-party integrations that give you um like i said code that needs to go into the header um, the footer or the body of your um, website's code. Once again, all of this is awesome. And then obviously, if you have any JavaScript code, you can paste this here. This here, however, would paste this JavaScript code globally, meaning that it'll be on every single page. Um, Beaver Builder does not have the option to, as of now anyway, to set um, JavaScript code per page. Um, from there, we've got uh, settings. So basically site identity, um, basically you can set the title of your website. This here is basically default on almost anything that you use. But um, you know, you can put the title of your uh, website here. So title of website. And then um, if you have a tagline, you can paste that information here as well. And then the biggest piece, right, uh, which is very key, because Google now shows on mobile devices um, the favicon on in your search results. If you didn't know that, you just learned something as well. So I dare you to pull up Google anything, pull up your website, pull up any website. You'll as long as they have a favicon, you'll see a little icon on the left hand side of the listing. And once again, this is on mobile view. And that for WordPress websites, this is where you can update that and um, um, upload that. So you make an image icon. They recommend the size to be 512 by 512. You'll click select icon and upload that here. And for the most part, that will uh, enable that icon to show up in the tabs on desktop. And as of now, in 2019, um, it also shows up in the mobile view of your uh, mobile search results um, of uh, Google's listings. Um, homepage settings. So uh, if you're blogging, you know, your latest blog post will probably be um, an option for you to do. Um, however, if you if you actually want to use a page, um, which here you'll be able to see a lot of the stuff that we've done um, configured. Right. So now you've got, oh, you know, it did work. So I'm actually going to take us back and this here. Oh, and then we can also see the parallax view. So a few things. Remember we set the parallax view for the footer. Well, if you notice the way that this is revealed, the web page is is on top of the footer. So when I scroll down, it's revealing the footer area at the bottom. So that's the parallax as well. Um, and then um, up here, I'm gonna go back and show you how these headings are actually, um, are doing the uppercase, lowercase, um, regular and default. Um, but I'll do that here momentarily. But this is how you can set your pages. And then if you did have a blog, if you had a page that you dedicate you that, that you want dedicated to show all of your um, archived blog posts, you can click this drop down and just select that page here. Um, from there, uh, menus, this is where you create your menu. So you, you just simply would create menu. You would name the menu, right? Main menu, for instance. You'll click on where you want the menu to go. I'm going to say header top area because that's where we actually have the menu anyway. Click on next. Click add items. And really the only link that I could add is the sample page. And then I'm going to go ahead and click the back button. Um, from there, when I click this drop down now, um, I mean, obviously I've got the worst colors in the world. But you can see up here it says sample page. And that's that's the item that was added to the menu. Um, and also, just for kickers, 
We can also say um, footer menu. Click on main menu there. And as you can see, it says sample page down here below because we had a menu option down here, right? So pretty awesome settings here. Uh, from the back, uh, from there. So this is what I was meaning um, why you should have a child theme. If you add additional CSS um, to your website. So meaning, let's say I want this text to be black for whatever reason. And, and, and for whatever reason, let's just say I want it to be black and... I just did not want to use the customizer and I didn't want to use Beaver Builder, which is highly unlikely because there's no reason for that um, because you already have those. That that example is actually already. Um, that's, that's the whole reason why you would want Beaver Builder so you, that you, do, you don't have to do too much actual coding. However, um, I just added this CSS and I am in the child theme. So as you can see. Um, the text is now black. Um, I can make it white. Right? The text is there, right? However, let's say I did this in the main thing. When Beaver Builder needs an update, it will basically install a new version of or the latest version of Beaver Builder and it will override not just this custom code. Um, but I believe it would even override all of the options in my customizer because it basically just installed a whole new um Layout. Now, mind you, the customizer, I'm not, I can't initially say if that is 100% true because I've always used child themes ever since I found out about them. However, if I am correct, or even if I'm not correct, the idea is just that that's basically what's going to happen. If you have any specific styling on your website and you're not using a child theme, that specific styling is subject to be overwritten. Having a child theme saves you from that. So whenever you can use a child theme, use a child theme. And then lastly, this will probably be one of the longer longer videos I have ever made. So if you made it this far, give yourself a hand clap. Because this customizer, we have thoroughly gone through a lot. Uh, at this bottom area, you have this export import option. So if you're a website developer and you know that you have like these presets that you just like to work with, you've got a favorite font such as me, Poppins. Um, there's a default color set that you specifically like, you know, that in the footer, you put, you put the menu to the left, the, the email to the right. The idea is that you can actually export out your customizer settings so that you can just simply upload them to a new website that you may be designing. Um, along with that, you can also, um, override settings as well so the idea is just that you know um, i haven't gotten into it yet um as of me recording this video however i am looking to streamline the way that i make my website so i do plan on using this option um but if you're just a person that has one website i mean for the most part there's no real reason that you would need to export these option sets unless you just want to have a copy of them for yourself um just in the just in case <laughs> your stuff does get overwritten maybe um, but the idea is just that this is the case here with the Im export import option. So we have gone through everything on uh, the customizer option for the Beaver Builder child theme, the theme slash child theme. Um, if you like this video, please like it. If you have any questions, please leave uh, uh, leave them below. We've been um, being we've been um, very active in the comments lately, and also from that. Um, if you do like this video, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.